with a man that people call describe as Iranian. What do you mean, buddy? Con- what do you mean, buddy? What are you talking about? <laughs> Muhammad. What do you mean, huh? Uh, so I don't. There's no more details about this Iranian-looking man. Was he meeting another contact that we don't know about? I'm not sure. It's interesting that you say that because the part of the uh, the report that his housekeeper gave that she did say that he did have a meeting within the week before leaving for Mart- Martinsburg with a man that looked to be dark-skinned or Arab. Hmm. So there you go. Was, was, he meet- was he meeting another contact for more information about the octopus? Potentially. Potentially, but... We know we've got not. ties to Iran, so... Uh, after that, he said he met a man named Mike Looney who was staying in the room next to him. Uh, they chatted for a bit. At around 5.30, they met again around 8. Uh, he stated that Danny was waiting to meet another contact who was going to give him more information to solve the huge case, the octopus. <laughs> See, this now, to me, though, like it's starting to paint a picture of Danny to me. Danny's got loose lips, baby. He's who the fuck is this? Why who is this guy? Him? He's at yeah. the bar. He's like, I got this huge case. Yeah, well, he's, he's, the octopus is here. He's, got ah. fuck, he's on the wine at nine, boys. He's having a good time. Yeah, Loose lips sink ships. He's having a time. Yeah. yeah, he even goes as far as to talk to talk to Mike and say, ah, the guy probably blew me off. He leaves brief, briefly for a phone call. He comes back. They keep talking around 930. The last time Danny was seen alive was at a convenience store around 10 p.m. buying a coffee. So he's he's gearing up for an all-nighter. He's grabbing that, a coffee. 100%. That's, when I read that, I was like, this, hey, there, <laughs> but, boys, there's weirdos that can fucking crush a coffee and go to bed, though. I... I know, I can, I'm one of the. I, I'm I one can of do that. Are you? Oh God! I listen. I get drinking caffeine. Right now. All I'm caffeine sure. intake. I'm talking chocolate. I'm talking fucking caffeines. I'm talking everything. You done get one milli, one milligram in in your 10 toast. A.m. I'm stunned. I'm shut her down you at see, 10 a.m. You see these bags? Look at me. Yeah, yeah check these ones out. I'm here. Yeah, but you pack those in. Immune to caffeine. Disneyland. Immune to caffeine. Yeah. Except when I drink coffee at night, I, it's two usually, carry-ons right here. Yeah, buddy. Those aren't carry-ons, like, bud. You when I drink coffee at night, it is for it's for if I am st- if I'm going to play a show or something late, I'll drink coffee. But if I had to, to go pretend to pretend it works, yeah. yeah. I, if I had <laughs> if I had to go to bed, I could go to bed. Like, it's not good. I, sometimes I'll use it as a placebo. I'll be like, yeah, it's crush a coffee. Now I can say that. Now One I'm cup of coffee and like I don't even get a big boost from it. Nah, but I'm not tired. I can't sleep and I'm peeing every twenty minutes. Like just pee in my pants. Got to go. It's the worst. Still drink a lot of it though. Yeah, I mean, so we've talked about a lot of controversial facts, but it even goes as far as say that, uh, according to the FBI, police were not very cooperative when the FBI started looking in. They are almost met with, like, complete resistance from the Martinsburg police and prosecutor's office. Because they didn't want to admit that they shit the bed so bad. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't right. know this. We, this, we fucking that's, blew it. We dropped the fucking ball. That's 100% the case. Um, there is a, a serious pattern in government and law enforcement where it's if you make a mistake, it's not apologize, it's cover up. Uh, deny, we're seeing that deny, right deny, now deny. With, with that school w- that school shooting, right? Where oh, like Texas. Yeah. yeah, where they're like the entire oh, law enforcement so just refused to participate with federal investigation and shit. Yeah, because it's they were because, scared. Like, they, yeah, they made a mistake. Of course, and, and it's you, scary, but you chose to wear the badge, man. Get the fuck in there. Those are yeah. children. I don't want to yeah. uh, fucking. Yeah, that's yeah, a whole we case. won't get into it, but it, it's like that. That unfortunately is the culture of like if you make a mistake and like very quickly, just even us, a couple of duds from Canada reading the circumstances, you go like, Baldies. "Well, this wasn't done properly." Like this one hundred percent was not done properly, right? So like the FBI starts asking questions. It it, it kind of makes sense that they instantly clam up. Because you got to remember, this is people's livelihoods, right? There's there's people, there's probably like, you know, in, inspectors and chiefs and stuff that are outside of the police union or whatever that could potentially lose their jobs over something like this. So they don't, like, it's their livelihood. So they're trying to, you know, minimize their involvement by being as unhelpful as possible. Yeah. I mean, it goes... Police withholding information, just trying everything everything they can to not admit that they fucked up in the investigation. I mean, even in the end, when the like the evidence of the extra towels, bloody towels, came up, they was like, "Yeah, whatever, no big deal." Yeah, uh, we didn't see him. 
Yeah, def- we missed him, I guess. Yeah, fighting the break. Yeah. Well, they, they Irrelevant to as, the case. They went as far as hiring this uh, this uh, expert witness who's a, a, a Dr. Henry Lee. Apparently, he's like he's a crime scene expert, blood spatter expert. They hire this guy and they do a reenactment of the scene so they can try to find out to the, get this guy to deem like was it a suicide or not. This professional gives a stamp of rule. Yeah, it was it was a suicide. And then a few months later, he learns about the fucking bloody towels. That were hidden under the scene. He's like, what the fuck? Like, why didn't you guys say that? Like, I put my name on this, and now I'm learning about that? Like, that's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, they withheld evidence from him. It's crazy, man. And and just to get this, <clears throat> I, re- I truly, I don't know. It's a tough one for me because I do not think the... The like local police were involved. I just think the local police were incompetent. They were negligent. They were awful. And lazy. yeah, n- negligent and incompetent. Lazy. lazy. Do I think they were involved? No. I just think they were just bad at the job. And they're just like, hey, open shut clay, suicide, suicide. Die, close the box. Let's go. Same like we talked about last week with the Toronto Police Service. They had Scully and Hitchcock. They flew them down from <laughs> Toronto, right? Oh, can you look into this one? It's suicide. They're like, okay, perfect. Done. Clean up, boys. Yeah, and then we're gonna get we gotta get to one more thing before we wrap this case up, and that is we talked about it briefly, the conflicting reports of his briefcase. Supposedly, he had a briefcase that contained all his files, his notes, documents, all pertaining to his octopus conspiracy. Uh, they interviewed like many hotel employees who had contact with Danny. They never found the briefcase in the hotel, but the front desk employee did recall Danny carrying a brown briefcase, which indicates that perhaps someone took the briefcase from his room. Perhaps the same person who I staged a suicide by slashing this guy's wrists and putting him in a bathroom. Well, or, or potentially drugging him. and Like... We don't know. There, we don't know the vents, but something there happened. There was bruises on him, right? So it's like we're not a hundred percent sure, but it really points to that. We're zero percent sure. We have not, no idea. No idea. There were, but I would say the evidence for me, the evidence points to that this was probably not a suicide. I mean, there just, are some things that we didn't touch on, like the fact that uh, that Danny had just had his third book proposal rejected. He had a hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollar fucking mortgage payment that was due. Right, he had stuff like that. He had mounting pressure from friends and family for what he's working on. He did state that he, you know, he was he was getting ready to release his his article to Time Magazine uh, about the octopus, which was not true. And then there's a possibility of the fact that he did know that he had MMS, and he, you know, got lost within this case, and potentially f- realized that maybe this was going nowhere, and he was chasing dead ends and got sucked in the deep dark hole of depression and did that. Do I well, think that's what happened? Nope. But there well, is that let's, possibility. Let's ex- let's expand on that just a little bit. Like, so let's say that you know that person that saw him that was depressed. Maybe the info information that he had just received from Turner uh, didn't bear the fruits that he thought. So it's like yeah. his story is going nowhere. But there's still a story. There's still a story. And like, and and you know, to be fair, the Inslaw case and this kind of stuff. It's fact that the Inslaw scandal is real. You can look it up. That it is well documented, and that this he would have broken this case. Same so with the, the October is, surprise. That is now yeah. considered a fact. So it's so there's enough of that. But like, let's say that maybe, maybe this is kind of where my brain thought because I I was trying to like when I these these specific cases I always am like he did the murder or he did this. That's kind of where my brain always goes. So I try to think through that process i, I always why. think they're guilty every time yeah, I'm like, yeah me too i'm like guilty yeah. he did it uh so i was trying to figure out okay well maybe why so then i thought maybe he got to a point in this investigation where he went i can't i know this is real but i can't prove it i can no longer with my means with what's happened now i can no longer prove it. i've gone as far as i can with my investigative journalist so he destroys his briefcase, he destroys his notes, and he sets up his suicide to look as suspicious as possible so that someone else might look in, and this might be a catalyst to find out this other information. Why destroy your briefcase, though, in that sense? 
because you want people to be the, the I'm just this is I'm leave, going off leave of some he did kill. A, leave a treasure trail hey guys thanks for watching I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments but here's the next one over here or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation you get ac full access to it on Patreon Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.